The next operation we want to take a look at is the time reversal operation. So let's look at the definition of that. We can talk about time reversing x of t, sometimes calling it reflecting about the t equals zero axis. But all we do is we replace x of t, we replace that t with negative t. So if I had a signal x of t and I want to create a new signal that we'll just call y of t here, I would do that by performing this operation right here. Graphically or visually, kind of what happens when you do that is you're basically flipping the original signal about the t equals zero axis. So if you can kind of picture that vertical axis, everything that was at positive time now is at negative time. Everything that was at negative time is now at positive time. And we'll do some examples here so we can uh, visualize that and also do it algebraically like we did in the last video. All right, so let's do a specific example. So let's say I have a signal x of t that starts off at time minus one and then it kind of linearly ramps up to one and then it holds that value for one and then at about one and a half, there's one and a half right there, it starts linearly decreasing and then goes down to a value of zero at time two. So that's our starting signal x of t. And not too surprising, we're gonna create a signal y of t that is the time reversed version of x of t. So again, picture in your mind taking this and spinning it about that axis right there. So that is the point t equals zero, that vertical axis is t equals zero. So horizontally spin all the data points about that. Another way of thinking about it is, you know, this point right here at positive two ends up being the value here at negative two. And this value right here at 1.5, that value ends up being back here at minus 1.5. So if you want to, you can kind of point by point flip it from one side to the other. And we'll go ahead and do that right here. So let me go ahead and draw my axes. This axis went from minus 1, 0, 1, 2. So I know on this axis where I'm flipping things, I want minus 2, minus 1, 0, positive 1. Those are kind of the four numbers I need. And then, like I said, this number right here ends up going right there. And then we kind of linearly, we're decreasing right here. So I'm going to be increasing on this side. And then I'm going to hold steady for a while. Previously, I held steady from 0 to 1.5. Now I'm going to head, held steady from minus 1.5 to 0. So that's that piece right there. And then this piece is at negative time. Once it gets time reversed, it will be at positive time. So it was originally on the time interval minus one to zero. Now that's going to exist on the time interval zero to one. So we get that piece right there. And then just to make things kind of uh, visually a little easier to see how these pair up, you can see that this blue line is this blue line. It's been time reversed. This orange line is the time reversed version of that segment of the waveform. And then this purple piece right here is what ended up right here, just like we did. So after you do this a few times, it's not too bad to do. Just kind of look at the time interval, negate the whole thing, and then sketch it kind of backwards, so to speak. Kind of go from this direction that way and sketch the signal backwards along this axis. And if you need to, you can always just pick individual points. You know, pick that point, pick that point, pick that point, and time reverse them all to see where they end up. That's another easy way to do it. So when you have a signal that's kind of a plot and you need a time reverse, that's kind of the method to follow. What about when you have just an algebraic equation? As an example, what if we have the signal x of t equals t squared sine of 2 pi 10 t? So let's say that's my starting signal and somebody says, hey, time reverse that signal. Well, we know what that means. That means replace all the t's with minus t. So here I'm going to create the time reversed signal y of t, which is the time reversed version of x of t. So I need to replace every t that I see. There's one here and there's one here. I need to replace that with negative t. So again, I like putting parentheses as my placeholder and then putting in the minus t. And then same thing here in the argument of the sign. Go ahead and put a, a parentheses right there where the t was and then replace it with minus t. 
If you don't need to simplify or you're not told to simplify, I think that's a perfectly fine answer. It's a, kind of a little ugly, so we'll go ahead and do just a little bit of algebraic simplification because it's not that bad. A negative t squared, once we square that, we get a positive t squared. And then we have sine of minus 2 pi 10t if we distribute the negative sign. And then we know that sine is an odd function, so sine of a negative quantity is negative sine of the positive quantity. Another way of saying that is when you have sine of a negative, you can kind of pull this negative out front because it's an odd function. So I pulled that negative sign out front, and we have minus t squared sine of 2 pi t. So I've finished the time reversal of x of t by following this simple algebraic rule, replacing t with minus t. So that's it for our time reversal discussion, pretty straightforward. In the next video, we'll discuss our last time operation that we want to talk about, time shifting, and then we'll follow that up with some combined operations, doing time reversing, time shifting, time compressing in combined fashion. We'll have some examples like that two videos from now.